Day three, and it's been energizing, but also exhausting. And yeah. being surrounded by people who all intentionally are trying to drive change is an intense experience, and it, and it should be, but it will take some processing. You know, going I mean, home. Yeah, I've often talked about serendipity engines, you know, that, that put unusual elements together and, and concoct different realities or trajectories or whatever. And this is absolutely one of those. One of the things I love is that I've been to some really big sessions, which, you know, how do you sell degrowth as a concept, which was really interesting. You know, there was something about we've taken growth and equated it to, to prospering. Um, and, and flourishing, and whilst only leaving it as a financial growth piece. Yeah. Uh, so you've got these big questions, and then you've got really um, localised issues that have been discussed. I was in one of the sessions yesterday, and there was talk about specific um, accelerator in Yorkshire that had done really well because of this, yeah. this and the other. And, and it's that thing about having the place based and the context and the local and the practicality, and then yeah. zooming out. You know, I, I think degrowth is a bit like a Zen koan, something you say to shock people out of their current reality. But I, I think it's delusional in some ways. Yes, we've got to squash some sectors, but we've got to have, have other ones. Well, well it was interesting because somebody made the point, and I think it's really interesting, is the people who are anti-degrowth see it as a verb, that you're degrowing something, but degrowth as a noun, that this is the transition where we're figuring out what can grow and what have we gone beyond our boundaries in yeah. is, a, is a completely different story. I thought that was a really interesting take on that was somebody in the audience. And again, it comes back to the same thing as last year, that the audience here could be on most of the panels yeah. and, and, and most of us are swapping roles all the time. I think one of the interesting things was this announcement last night, this yeah. morning, that leaders of political parties in the UK have sent uh, letters apologizing for not being here and um, acknowledging the importance of an initiative or a movement like this yeah. in helping to galvanize energy around a new agenda for Britain. I think it's been interesting to be in some sessions where people say, thank God the politicians of the current breed and ilk are not here because they'd simply use it to grandstand. Well, so, but it's good that they've done the letters. But it's but it's it, but it's such an interesting because last year I remember there were a couple of, of politicians like Rachel Reeves came for a few days. Yes. They haven't been here in force, and yet this is a political yeah. agenda, really because if you're talking about what the country should look like um, and what we we wish for the country on people on place on prosperity and our, yeah. and the place of Britain in the world, which is the anthropy sort of manifesto, yeah. then that's deeply political. And it will be interesting to see how, yeah. how punchy uh, I it don't, gets. I don't think that's come through enough in 2023 at Anthropy. And I think what is happening as this change agenda, we all recognize it's pushing into the mainstream. You're getting an organized push back, anti-ESG, anti-woke, you know, ultra right wing, this, that, and the other. And I don't think the change movement is properly prepared for that, firstly, it's not set up yet to do the politics in the way that they will need to be done. And one of the big questions, if you've got three major parties in this country writing these lovely letters, how do we do the politics ahead of the next election and beyond? And I suspect probably next year, anthropy will happen after an election rather than or yes. in the thick of it. Um, how, do we, how do we manage that? A couple of people said, oh, we haven't had enough naysayers here. And I still think that it's okay to debate amongst yourselves yeah. for a little bit. Yeah. But, and, and I think the, the interesting um, activity, and I think it's coming, will be, well, so what do the anthropists who are here think about certain big issues? What do they think are the most important issues? Yeah. And if that can be funneled into yeah. political process, especially in this year of election coming up, that will be really interesting. If anthropy were to properly become a platform for the new politics that are going to be required, then one activity would be just to encourage people coming in the first two anthropies to map their constituencies. Who do you connect with? Who do you, that you, know, would you be do interesting. represent? Where are the overlaps? And I suspect quite a few people here will be in advisory roles, so they, they, yeah. they won't 
have that sort of political constituency, but we need to build that sense of where's the critical mass in all of this? Where are the elements of that critical mass? How do we put them together and how do we then really start to move? Well, there this, we go. Uh, well, that sounds like a project you could um, suggest to Atsby that, that you want to <laughs> sub-lead, John. <laughs> I, I, think you're, I think you're right. This is a glorious setting. We're sort of embedded in the quintessence of green growth and sustainability and so on. And yet, in the wider world, it is a very different set of realities. Of course. And I'm not sure yet that is being properly represented, discussed, addressed here. So I, and I think it will come. It can come. Absolutely. That is something that should be discussed between now and the next yeah. Anthropy, or yeah. th that's, again, an option to have activities through the year that connect these people. Because, again, if everybody just goes home and goes back to their day jobs a bit yeah. more energised and connected, that's great, but it's not the, the change we need to see. There's something about this bottom-up um, yeah. connection. Yeah. So I'm going to and probably drag our team And that will spook politicians. Yeah. That, that will spook politicians yeah. and catch their attention. So um, that, but I think it has to be bottom-up rather than driven from the yeah. top. Yeah.